Hi guys, welcome back to my um, 365 rebuild with a pop-up piston and a little bit of porting. Um, yeah, I'm all ready to put it back together now. Uh, the saw is a lot cleaner than when you saw it last. And uh, I did a bit more porting and stuff on a bit more, more for flow than I haven't changed the timing, but I've done a lot of work on getting the cylinder to flow more air. So with the pop-up piston and the base gasket delete, what I'm hoping is that really makes a difference uh, to how the saw runs. Well, I know it will because I've done it on lots of other saws. Um, so I just switched you on um, and I'm going to film and just chat to you while I glue the cylinder down. So I'll show you the sealant that we use. I'll show you a little bit of the uh, bottom of the cylinder so you can see a bit more of the porting work. Um, and then on the next video, you'll see a running and first start and cutting and stuff. So let's get involved. So if I just angle you down, just get you set up here. There you go, right. So this is the sealant I nearly always use. Um, it's yeah designed as a flange sealant, works really well. So I've degreased all of these surfaces now. So this is the bottom mating surface. Surface. If you've seen the, um, if you have seen the, uh, oh, what are they called on in, on YouTube, the short or whatever it was of me doing the washing up. So this is all a lot cleaner than when you saw it last time. Um, so you can see the sort of finished. If I just turn this, bring this torch this way a bit, you can see the finished cylinder there. So all I've gone for really is just trying to get more flow, make it easier. So the main thing we've done is cut down now the height of this here. It's much, much higher stock. There's about another quarter of an inch of transfer in between. Um, and then what I've done is just knife edged, I don't know how easily you can see it, knife edged the divider down inside if I use this to point, so the divider down inside here is knife edge and I biased it towards the primary transfer there. So this is the primary one, the bigger one, this is the secondary one. So the primary transfer I've made bigger and I've just tried to take up more of this space here, which is the shadow you can see, which is so it uses all of this opening where the air comes out of the case. So what we're going to do is stick this back down now. So. I will get on with doing that. So just brought you in a bit here. Just before I stick this cylinder down, you can see I've spread all the sealant out, um, just nice and thin. Just be really careful on the edges here. You need to make sure it really does seal on these edges, on these 365s and 372s. There's not a lot of space there, so you need to really make sure it's there. Hopefully you can see it's a lot cleaner than it was when we took it apart. Uh, and of course you can see the pop-up in the piston, which will give us extra compression. So that is me all ready to get going. I will just pause you a minute and get this cylinder, get the ring seated on it and get the cylinder all ready to push on and then I'll push it on and bolt it down. Okay, so that is the cylinder all ready to slide on. A little bit fiddly, which is why I paused you. Um, the main thing I wanted to just show you is here, the thing to always check when you do this is just slide it in so far and just have a look through the intake and check here that both sides, that one side of the ring is either side of that little pin that holds them. Sometimes it can flick under it or flick out. It's just a good check to do as you slide it all under. So I'll put you back up there and then we should just be able to Slide this all the way down now. There we go. I was just give it a bit of a wiggle like that just to get it seated properly. And then we just get a bolt in. And yeah, what I do is normally the best practice, so I just do them at finger tight, cross tight and then finger tight. So 
I'll do that one and then I'll come over and do this one. Just pause you while I do the rest. Well, that was a fun one, everyone. I realised just as I paused you there that I hadn't put the intake on. <laughs> so I had to take it all off again and put the intake on and then put it all back on again. It's all back together again now. So what I tend to do with these is do them all up sort of finger tight and then go back around them and cross tighten them with some proper torque on them, which I'm just doing now. I did not hone the cylinder in the end because I haven't got the right size hone. I've only got a 51 mil hone and a 54 mil hone. So, but the cylinder was pretty good to be fair. It would have been nice just to probably put a bit of scotch bright around it or something. Or if you've got, if you're doing this, I might say put a bit of scotch bright over it just to break the glaze, that type of thing, just help the rings bed in. But it should be pretty fine to be honest. So the other thing I should mention is, of course, I'm not in the shed. And that is because it's zero degrees out in the shed. And I don't think this sealant will cure very well. So I've had the saw inside for 24 hours, just so the Loctite 574 can cure. So what I've done, you'll notice I haven't put the plug in. Um, what I'm going to do now is just reassemble the rest of this. Not this much more to do, really. Put the throttle cable back on. Um, the impulse line is back on now. I did that with the intake. Um, all I've really got to do is do the two screws back up and then put my freshly cleaned plastics um, back on and we are good to go. I've of course got the bolt for the uh, handle as well there. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is just let it sit for 24 hours because the sealant takes a while to seal. They say a couple of hours, you see people pulling them over but I do think if you pull these over now while the sealant is wet, you have the chance of introducing, you know, a track um, of air where it doesn't seal. So I literally don't leave it, don't put any pressure in it, don't pull it over, don't, it's tempting to feel the compression. Don't do any of that, just leave it now until the morning in a nice warm place. The sealant will dry and then you've got a much better chance. By the way, thank you very much to the saw shop that commented on this little rubber bung, which you can't see, there you go, this little rubber bung, which always goes in this hole on the cylinder, and I didn't know what it's for, and it's to stop the engine cover vibrating against the top of the cylinder, which I didn't know, so that was a little gem, so thank you for that, if that was you that commented, I really appreciate it. Well, there you are guys, she's all back together. Top cover back on. As you can see, the plug's not there because I'm just gonna let the sealant dry now. Um, you can see, if you can stay there, you can see the piston going up and down. So we've not, we've not got no clearance because she comes up and down quite nicely and doesn't catch anything. Can't do this whilst holding you <laughs> and everything else, very difficult. So yeah, all nice and clean. Um, all ready to go so yeah I will um, catch up with you when she's all back together so there you go guys I hope you enjoyed that um, hopefully you uh, now she's back in one piece you're as excited as I am to hear a run I'll do a come um, I'll probably run her up so running in is interesting isn't it um, probably the next time you see me I will have just let it idle Probably started it and stopped it, put a few heat, few heat cycles through it. Just double check those cylinder bolts. And then uh, I'll probably do a, like a final video in this series where I'll do a squish check, a final compression check, and we'll do some running with it. So thanks very much if you made it this far. Hopefully you found this useful. Do put a question down below. It does seem as well some really knowledgeable guys are watching these videos already. So if you do have a question, if I can't answer it, someone else will probably be able to answer it. Um, so yeah, just hope this really helps. Um, just doing this really simple set of mods on these saws, which really, really wakes them up. Um, and it's stuff, as you can see, I'm in my house with simple tools. It's easy stuff that you can do at home. Uh, it's not complicated work. And on an older saw like this with a few hours on it, you just really refresh it, 
bring it back up to scratch. When, when it's got no other problems, I will say as well, this one operates well in all, you know, in all of the attitudes. The carb doesn't bog, it's got no carb problems. I had a feel of the rod when I was in there, so there's no up and down play on the rod. The crank was not blued or anything. So, you know, everything else is in pretty good condition. Top end wasn't tired at all. Uh, it wasn't, sorry, it wasn't worn out. It was tired. The piston has got some wear on. So ideal thing you can do with any buy, any saw you buy off eBay or Marketplace or a saw you've had for many years, you can just refresh them and give them, you know, like, like Walter on a fleet command says, and I really like his saying, you know, you're giving them their second service life. Really, this one's still on its first service life. But, you know, if you look at racing motocross bikes, they put a new piston and rings in every 10 hours. My little KTM 85, which is blown out to 105 cc, you know, we need new rings in that, which is a new piston every 15 hours or something. So, yeah, we're really on these, these chainsaws are on a low state of tune and we run them much longer. But thanks very much. If you're not subscribed, please do. Um, do click a thumbs up on this. If you did find it useful, it takes a bit to make it. Um, and it shows YouTube that the people like what we're doing. Drop us a comment. Let's get a conversation going. Thanks for watching, everyone.